So our next speaker, uh, Simon Brock from the Deer and Monitor Farm. Um, Simon's going to bring us back closer to home. Uh, he's farm manager on the Swanton Morley uh, estate, and he's going to talk about cost control on a reasonably conventional UK arable farm. Thank you. Right, good, uh, good morning. Um, as Tim said, I'm a farm manager from Norfolk. Um, I am the first and only uh, monitor farm in Norfolk at the moment. Um, and for the next, I've only got a 10 minute slot, so I just wanted to, um, I'm not going to go through in big detail about all my costs, I'm afraid. I don't think my boss would particularly like it, and I'm not really clever enough to remember all that sort of thing. But instead, I wanted to bring it down to more of a practical level on what we're doing on farm. Um, we get bombarded a lot with all the latest fads in farming at the moment. We're, we're, we're told about controlled traffic and soil health and cover crops. So I want to try and bring those in and show you what I'm trying to demonstrate through our through our monitor farm and how they affect costs. So just to get that story on the road, a, a quick bit about our farm so you get the sort of feel for it. Uh, I'm a farm manager and I'm also the uh, agronomist. Uh, we have, so there's me and there's three very good blokes, they're fantastic blokes, and I then have a, a one summer casual and we have a part-time secretary that does the admin work. Uh, we roughly grow about 1,000 hectares of crops uh, that go for a combine or a beet harvester, 880 for a combine and 120 for a sugar beet harvester. Our soil type is a Beckles Series 3, so it is, although we've got quite good drainage, it does get very wet and very sticky, uh, so that can be quite a problem, so there's timeliness issues there. Um, and we have a 30 suckler cow herd, a herd of 30 suckler cows that don't really make any money at all, but they're quite cute. Um, <laughs> so that's the actual farm. Um, when you become a monitor farm, the first thing, that rather scary thing they do is they do a farm business review. And this very nice chap called Richard Means from Strutton Parker comes out and goes through your business in detail and looks at everything you're doing. And, uh, and these are the three main points that I sort of drew out his criticism. We came for it fairly lightly, which I was quite pleased about. But he, my, and this will show through uh, in the later slide, we need to review my chemical inputs and purchases. They're quite high. Uh, my, I need to look at my labour costs. They have these lovely figures. They've got 7.5 target hours per hectare, whereas I'm running at 9.1, so I'm a bit high there. My machinery costs, although they weren't too bad, I've got quite high horsepower per hectare, but I thought, well, if my machinery costs aren't too bad, that can't be a, a too bad a thing. So, also, the other thing you do is get into um, benchmarking. So, this is my benchmarking done by the AHDB. Um, there's a couple of things I'll show you. So, so this is me down this row, so 2015, 2016, that was a very nasty harvest. It was the wet, horrible June um, where we didn't get much yield. We typically get nearer the 10. Uh, and then they'd tell you the top 20, 30%, uh, the average and the bottom. So this is for my, for my area. Uh, a couple of things I do want to just correct. I, I, I've, somewhere I'm wrong with my variable costs. They're about 70 quid less than that. Uh, we then have... Um, it, it follows quite through to the, uh, follows quite well quite through to the to the to the one Strutton Parker did that you can see our labour costs are quite high. You see, I'm at 229 here, which is well up there with the worst 25%. Uh, so I need to look at that. My machinery costs aren't too bad. I'm sort of pretty Joe average. These costs here are calculated by AHDB. So because we don't put in our rent and our finance, they have a little way of working that out. And then it gives you a rather frightening figure at the bottom, the total fixed costs here at the bottom, the total cost of production, which follows on very well from what Samuel was saying. Just to keep the maths simple, we divide those by 10. You can see that typically, in, in my case, I, I do sort of roughly know a bit more accurate with these, these figures in here that the HDB calculate. And I think if I can get 10 tonnes, it costs me about 130 quid to grow a tonne of wheat. Um, you can see if you get it wrong, it's nearly £170 a tonne. And, uh, and, and the worst thing that it is, is, is once you drop the yield, so last year wasn't a particularly good yield, so normally I'm 130 If I start dropping down to eight tonnes, it goes up to £150 a tonne to grow wheat. So that's all, all quite sobering. Um, so just quickly looking at the variable costs, they tend to be considered more fixed costs nowadays. I think that's a lot to do with resistance. Uh, black grass is an absolute classic. We don't wait anymore to just go and pop a bit of Atlantis on. We now have to stack herbicides to try and stop black grass coming up. We've also got resistance in septoria. So again, we don't tend to see the disease coming up. We go prophylactic uh, treatments. 
But my costs are high, and I've been reviewing those. I'm looking at whether I go into to buying groups and things like that. I think benchmarking on chemical costs, um, on chemical costs would probably be lovely if the AHDB could do that, and you could have a nice sort of set of all the chemicals to look at, but I think that's too politically sensitive. I've got to be careful not to have a Theresa May moment here. Um, so, one of the things that we talk about black grass and the cost of black grass, but quite surprisingly, on my farm, I'm finding it saves costs. So, my big thing is to look at, obviously, labour, which I've got wrong, and I've got three terrific blokes, but fortunately for me, one of them is coming up for retirement, or is over retirement now, and is looking at going... And so my big challenge is to see if I can run the farm and its budgets and plans going on at the moment without taking on the extra man to reduce, reduce my costs that way. So to me, it's all about trying to make things more efficient. Now, black grass, there are two reasons why I've changed my rotation. I used to be a classic wheat, barley rate, wheat, barley rate. One thing is the rate doesn't particularly like growing one year in three, so we're trying to get up to the Germans, more of a sort of four or five tonne yield would be nicer. So I'm trying to split that up, so I've now got a one in seven year rotation. And also, I'm bringing in these are spring beans and sugar beet to try and get into spring cropping so that I'm getting away from constant autumn, uh, autumn workload, which by doing that starts reducing the level. You know, it's so much easier now. I've got, you know, nearly sort of two thirds, uh, a third of my farm in spring cropping now, so it takes off the pressure. Um, and here's a, a, another um, effect of black grass. Your purists uh, amongst you will probably say it's still not quite right, but. One of the reasons I bought this machine was in an effort to reduce black grass. Um, I'm trying not to disturb the soil so much, and, and I'm trying to put it in so that the curb works a little bit better. So I bought this machine secondhand. It cost about £7,000. It, it was seven legs originally. Uh, one of my terrific blokes decided, oh, no, we can pull a couple more legs. So he seamlessly welded another two onto it. So now a nine-legged machine. Uh, the stock's vario cast at the top was £1,500. So for, for £8,500, I've got myself a rape drill, which is nice. It would be nice if it did all the crops, but unfortunately it only does rape. But um, here it is in action. And I used to have terrible trouble establishing rape. We didn't used to... We used to chop the straw to try and get the organic matter back in. And we used to cultivate it. Sometimes we'd plough it if it was light enough because we thought we could get a seabed and, you know, we'd keep the moisture. And a lot of management, you go and look and think, oh, that's not quite right, I need to do something else to it. And it was always drying out. This method is so much easier. We just go through the field, it's one pass, we bale the straw off straight through, and all it needs doing is rolling 24 hours afterwards. So before, I would have had a, I would have had a, a drill man on there, I would have had a cultivator there doing several cultivations. Now the whole job is more or less a one-man job, and the management of it is so much easier. And so that has proved black grass has saved me a lot of, um, a lot of work over the autumn. And just to prove it does actually work, here's the rape crop this year. Um, it does come well. The first year ever this year in Norfolk, we've actually had to spray for flea beetle, which was a bit of a shock. Um, but it has revolutionised my, my summer workload. Um, there's wheat to come in here as well, but I now I have one less casual at harvest. I hire one less tractor. It streamlined it a lot better, and, and I find the management of it so much easier. So it's, it's reducing my, my labour and my machinery costs that way. The other way we do it is... Um, Having black grass, we now don't drill anything to October. And having got to the end of September with about 20 tonnes of wheat seed still sitting in the shed, it's a, a fairly arse-nippy moment. But, uh, but it, 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 again, it's transformed our workload. So we, we, have a, um, we have a crawler here, which I bought for 10 years ago for about 59,000. It's now on the books at about 16,000, so the depreciation on that's quite low. But... You know, you've got risk there, and uh, we're going to rebuild the engine for fun this autumn just to make sure it's okay. Uh, the cultivator on the back costs nearly as much as that at just over 60000 But that now has become a one-man job, so he is just straight behind the combine cultivating. And it's nearly... I probably want to refine it a bit more as, you know, it's probably too aggressive for black grass, and there's another conversation about there. But the whole thing, again, has become a one-man job. If he's not pulling the... Uh, the the rape drill, he's pulling this. And so one man is doing all my establishment costs cost now, uh, establishment operations, and all that comes in now is the, uh, the drill following in October. So harvest now has become a much easier job. I have a full-time man who's now on that, so I don't have all the problems so much of casual sort of demolishing grain stores and all that sort of thing. So that, it all works a lot better. Now here's the, here's the thorny one. 
Um, isn't it lovely? It's all brand new and shiny and blue, and I mean, that's, that's still quite nice. That cost about 38,000. I mean, there's a bit of a story behind that, because I remember that. That was back in 2015, where you couldn't even, you, <laughs> the gypsies had stopped turning around for the scrap. It was worth absolutely nothing. Uh, you could barely give the stuff away. And, you know, the steel industry in England was in problem and all those sort of things. And I remember they'd given me a quote, and he rang up and he said, you need to hurry up with that because the price is going to go up. I said, well, why is the price going to go up? He said, price of steel. And you just can't believe it. And you do wonder how much of this is all on the back of the subsidy payment we get, that, the, you know, that it's drive, driven up the machinery costs. But anyway, I find still there are three places for this on the farm that we, that, that, um, we grow quite a bit of malting barley, so I tend to, to, to use it for um, reducing... Um, barley volunteers, uh, wheat volunteers coming in the barley crop. Um, and I cheekily use it, and there can be lots of debate about that. I do wonder if it's a reset button for the black grass. So every time it comes down to barley in the rotation, which is one year and seven, I plough all down and hopefully get rid of the black grass that has been building up. It also reduces slugs, and it's pretty good that way. The downside, as we all know, is it's very slow operation, and there's normally an awful lot of work to do afterwards to level it off and get back to a seabed. So one of the things that we are, we are looking at is reducing the amount of spring ploughing we do because, again, this is a big workload. There's a lot of ploughing to do in the, in the spring and then we get to the, uh, in the autumn, and then we get to the spring and there's a whole lot of levelling work. It makes, it makes things much more difficult. So on our monitor farm, we've got a large field that we've divided into three. So I've top-downed it in the autumn and put a cover crop in and then I've just straightforward top down and the other third is going to be it, well, it is conventionally ploughed. So we can look at all the establishment techniques in there. Um, the downside of all of these things is the cover crops looks great and there's, you know, there's a lot of interest in that and improving particularly beet yields. But then that cover crop will need spraying off and then ideally it would want RTK on the sprayer. That's £7,000 to get the steering bit and then another £5,000 for the software. So you'd think you're going to reduce costs and then you put them up again by, by, by investing more in the machinery to, to do the job. But that's what we're looking at. Um, this is the absolute ultimate if we're going to go down to zero tillage. Uh, I've been looking at a field on the, on the farm, it's now actually in its sixth year, where we haven't cultivated at all for six years. Uh, it's the absolute ultimate. You know, you've got one person doing all the drilling, one tractor, and it, and it all sounds great. The biggest problem we have is slugs. And the reason why this is going up and down the field the actual crop in there that's brown is burnt off uh, wheat uh, crop, which we grew in the autumn after rape. We just could not stop the slugs eating it. So it was zero, uh, zero tillage, and uh, we went in with the, uh, with the drill, and the slugs were just absolutely murdered it. So this is a, a neighbour putting in, uh, with a sumo DTS, putting in millet in about May, uh, because I couldn't bear the embarrassment of, of my monitor farm open day in the summer and everybody looking at my failed wheat crop. <laughs> But having discussed recently about it on various you know, talks, the people are saying, well, the way around this is to cultivate it. You know, you cultivate it straight behind the combine. But then I instantly think, well, there's another tractor, there's another person sitting on a seat. And so all these ways you look at trying to get it right, and there's always a little problem that just adds back the cost. But it's, it's, it's what I'd love to aim for, but I've, you know, my five-year trial, it hasn't been successful. I've had a couple of crop failures in there, but it's all part of the learning process. And it's what we do at, at the Monitor Farm in Norfolk. We're looking at that to see how we get on. But I, I would love to do it. And just to prove it did work, there's the millet crop. Uh, it worked very well indeed. It, it did about four tonnes per hectare. So, you know, it can work, but it, it, it has got its issues with it. So just in summary, I find cost control is, you know, it's got to be necessary. We've had our Brexit workshop yesterday, and it really is, and Samuel pointed out, you know, if that subsidy goes, we've got to reduce these costs. But it's a really difficult balancing act. And every time you sort of look at bits of ways of doing it, you find that, oh, we might need some controlled traffic. That's more money. We need another cultivator for the slugs. That's more money. So it's a really hard job to do. And, and at the end of the day, I do think we need to keep the, um, the yields up because once you divide the cost by the yield, it, that's pretty sobering when you get to cost per tonne. But that's what we're looking at. Uh, if you want to see how we get on, you'll have to come to my monitor farm meetings in Norfolk. Thank you very much.